I'm very excited and thankful to be here with you and tell a story. It's a connection between beekeeping and computing, which at first glance you might wonder what in the world is the connection. Well, I'll start here. The man in the picture is my father, and the story begins in some respect with him. In 1964, he ordered a package of bees from Sears and Roebuck. It arrived in the mail, and he became a beekeeper. I was born the next year, so I was born into a house where there were bees in the backyard. He was also a naturalist, a horticulturalist, a math teacher, a school principal. He planted lots of seeds in my mind and my heart when I was a kid. And I'll go ahead and skip to the end of the story. In the center of the image is a screenshot from a web application for beekeepers. You think, well, that's kind of odd as well. But no, this interesting story, and is still unfolding, has a web application for beekeepers that is now used in over 120 countries. Over 10,000 people have registered to use this. So over the course of the next few minutes, let me show you this connection and how that connection developed. Of course, the sweet part of this is the honey. This is a jar of premium sourwood honey, which we are known for in this region all over the world. So just like others, let's have a little audience poll to get you going. And I know the apparatus is working because I've seen you participating already, but let me start with an easy question. How many of you eat food? Raise your hand. <laughs> Everybody had better raise their hand, okay? That's not such an odd question, though, when we're talking about honeybees, because a lot of the foods you eat are dependent on honeybees for pollination or for enhancement of the, of the fruit. So let's continue on the honeybee side. And how many of you have heard a story or read a story in the last, say, year about honeybees? Raise your hand. There are actually three TED Talks centered on honeybees, and I highly recommend you go listen to those. Any of you know a beekeeper? Quite a few. Any of you beekeepers? Anybody? Sort of, yes, good, all right. So I'm a beekeeper, okay, and I keep about 75 colonies, uh, which makes me a sideliner beekeeper. So let's switch to the technology or the computing side of this, and this is a TED Talk, so I'd expect most of us to be pretty well versed here. Raise your hand if you've used a computer. Raise your hand if you own a computing device. Keep it up if you have one here with you. Have you used it while we've been t doing these talks? Oh, everybody, oh, no, I wasn't texting while you were up there. <laughs> That's okay, as long as you're texting, wow, this is a great talk, right? How many of you work for a company or uh, your, the revenue from your business is from an internet-based business? Anybody? A few. Anybody from one of the data centers in the area? Google, Apple, Facebook? No. Okay, so the point here is to get you thinking in the beekeeping realm and the technology realm and, and how might those connect together. I think you've already seen some of that. Another thing I would like you to think about as we progress here, there's a principle at work, and this is a theme in a lot of TED Talks and I've heard it already here today, and this is the fundamental principle of the interconnectedness of things. Now I would bet that all of us, regardless of our convictions or background or understanding of how the world works, can observe and agree with this. Whether you're a Douglas Adams fan, Dirk Gently, that's what he uses to solve his detective cases, is this principle. Or if you're a follower of teachings of Buddha or God of the Bible, that's where I stand. Or if you just use the internet, there is an inherent interconnectedness of things. So let me move to the next part of this story the beekeeping side of me. It's a relatively new piece of my life, though again the seeds were planted early on. It took them a while to germinate and get going. And uh, about eight to ten years ago, my wife and I began to think, we homeschooled our children, we lived on one acre of land, and we were thinking, we need a better context for doing what we're trying to do. So we picked up and we moved 
from a four bedroom, two and a half bath, comfortable house to a three bedroom, one bath house, 75 year old farmhouse, no insulation, your eco box has it beat, uh, and on 65 acres of land. And our motivation there was, again, to have a place to raise our family and teach our children. And the reason I'm saying this part of the story is that the beekeeping was woven in that. My father gave me two beehives in about the year 2000, and I became an actual beekeeper at that time. So on this farm, this family farm that we have, and we, that's a broad term, it includes anything we do on the farm. So what do we do? Well, we have crops and tractors and onions, sunflowers, zinnias, green beans, chicks, meat chickens, eggs, pigs, babies, <laughs> children, bees in the wintertime, bees in the springtime. Remember this image, I'll need it later. And honeybees, if you're a beekeeper, this is a beautiful picture, by the way. A swarm of honeybees. This was in my dad's yard about a month ago. Cats, lots of cats. Cakes, gluten-free and vegan if you want. We go to a market, in fact, I stopped by the market on the way down, my boys were running it. And then bees. Bees are about a third of what we do. So I'm immersed in bees as a beekeeper and part of this farm. So where in the world does the technology or the computing side fit in this? Well, that's actually been most of my life. And I determined it's not nearly as photogenic as the farm. So we're gonna stick on this slide and go with words. I went to university to be a math teacher like my dad. The seeds of what I did in technology and computing were planted again long ago. I love to work puzzles and figure things out. And I went to university to be a math teacher. I came out a computer science major. This was in the mid 80s. I went on and got a master's and PhD in computer science from Duke University. And I went to work at Appalachian State University, where I still am, as a computer science professor. I just finished my 22nd year there, eighth year as chair of the Department of Computer Science. So I have lived in the academic side of technology and computing during this crazy time of tremendous technology development, of uh, change, sea change, in the way we think about computing and what's possible. And so I was living in that academic world and all of a sudden it collided with this farm and this family and this different way of thinking. And so one day, like in this picture, and in fact almost in the exact same spot that this picture, the picture that's in the background here, I was standing at a beehive and I thought, I can use technology here. It could really help me. Why is that? Because beekeeping is an inherently observational activity. You go and you look at your bees, you see what they're doing, you see how the queen's doing, are they healthy, do they have food, and you remember what you did last time and I was having trouble doing that. And so I thought, I should be able to walk up to this hive with some sort of handheld device. They were not as smart six years ago as they are now. And it tell me, you're at hive number 37, you did this last time, maybe here's what you should be looking for this time, and just help me remember what I was doing with the hives, as well as give me suggestions for what I could do with the hive. So the genesis of an idea was born, I remember that day, thinking, wow, technology could really give me an assist. I didn't want it to take me out of the bee yard, I just wanted it to come alongside. Well, in the interconnectedness of things, I met a man who happened to live in the same town as me. He was a beekeeper, he was a professional software engineer, and he happened to have a similar idea to me. We joined forces, and the innovation of Hytrax, this web application, came out of that. And as I said, this is a very interesting thing to be a part of, the way it has grown. And let me show you a couple of slides of what we do. We, we try to replicate or reflect in the digital world what exists out in the bee yard. So the health of your colony, your queen status, your hives. I wish I could talk way more about bees because they are extremely fascinating and interesting. 
And so we try to capture this in the digital realm to help beekeepers know their bees better, to help them uh, be better beekeepers. Okay, so this is one of the screenshots. This is an interesting feature here. This is a Google map you might recognize. And in the bottom left, we draw a one mile, two mile, three mile radius ring around an apiary. And this shows the beekeeper where his bees are foraging. That tells him what kind of nectar sources are out there or exposure to pesticides or whatever kind of terrain is around. In the upper right, you see a zoomed in image. And this is in my father's backyard. And the little white squares there you can see are actual beehives. And so again, this is a, a tool that we've provided for beekeepers to see what's going on around their apiary. Now the, the zoomed in image, if you're paranoid, it's probably a little scary, but to me it's really cool. I mean, this is just a standard satellite image and you can see the beehives. That is fascinating to me. So this image is another one that we provide to the beekeepers. It's a map of other HiveTrax users around the world, and in this case, people who have opted to share the location of their yard with other HiveTrax users. And you can see from the map, we're very US-centric, but as I said, it's around the world. And it's just amazing that this has happened. This has been almost all organic grassroots growth. We've done very little marketing, and, and it illustrates, again, the power of the internet, the power of this is out there as a web address. Anybody can find it. And the story continues. We are just at the edge, we think, of our vision for this and where we want it to go, and are, are continuing to brainstorm and, and modify this tool and make it useful for beekeepers. We want to connect beekeepers, help them to know what other people are doing in their neighborhood, to give them the tools and the information to make good decisions to make the bees healthier. Uh, obviously, you've read these stories or heard these stories about the problems that bees are having. And we want to be a part of the solution to that problem. So what does that mean to you? Well, that was an interesting story, right? This connection of beekeeping and computing, but what can you take away from it? I ran across this quote a month or so ago, and I just, my jaw dropped, because this describes my life for the past eight years or so. And I think I would be a great case study for this particular quote. Joey Ito is the director of the Idea Lab at MIT, where lots of innovation goes on, obviously. And this was from his TED Talk this year. Focus on being connected, always learning, fully aware, and super present. Those are qualities that are required to be engaged and to uh, be innovative. So I would suggest you reflect, am I that way? Am I doing that? Have I put myself in a position to be part of innovation? The next question you might have is, well, what can I do? Well, I want you to help complete this thought. Joel Salatin, if you're not familiar, he's very big in the local food movement, farming, uh, pasture poultry, things like that. And with our farm, we, we're big fans of his. Anything worth doing is worth doing right or well is the typical response, and that is correct, except Joel Salatin puts a different spin on it. He says anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. You kind of scratch your head, really? Yes. Why? Because you often fail, and generally do fail, the first time you try things. You probably don't remember trying to walk, but you know, when you learned to walk, there was a lot of failure that, failure that went along with it. The point is, do something. And do things that are worth doing. Okay? So I would encourage you to uh, take that to heart. Don't just sit on the sidelines, but get engaged. Get fully engaged. Live life to the fullest. So let me step back into the beekeeping and technology connection for a moment and tell you what I'll call a just so story. If you're a fan of Rudyard Kipling, he has these great just so stories about how things just happen to work out to create things. And this is a just so story. I had a long list of them. But this is me, I'm on the right there, in case you didn't tell. 
The other gentleman is a beekeeper from Tanzania. And we are in Kiev, Ukraine, last fall. How's that for a connection? Okay. I was at an international beekeeping conference called Apomondia with the web application, just trying to see what the landscape was like. I looked across the room and I saw this lady that I thought I recognized, but the only place I'd seen her was on Facebook. She has a store on Harvard Square in Boston, Massachusetts that sells varietal honey. I sell varietal honey. I wanted to sell some to her previous to this engagement that, where I saw her. And I had emailed her and, and got connected with her about selling sourwood honey. I see her across the room in Kiev, Ukraine, say, hello, are you Mary? And she says, yes, who are you? And I told her who I was, told her what I was there for. And she said, well, you've got to come meet somebody. She took me to the Tanzanian booth. I met David and the government contingent there. And it turns out that this web application will be a great tool to help in what they're trying to do. They're using beekeeping and honey production as an economic development tool in Tanzania. And this tool that I have, this web-based tool, we believe will help in that process in the marketing and, and branding of the honey there. And so this crazy connection through Facebook and then through me being in Kiev, Ukraine, and David being in Kiev, Ukraine, now we have this connection that's moving forward. And I have many more like that that just kind of, I stand amazed in looking at these stories. So in closing, where are you in your life, in your living, in your thinking? I would suggest and insist or uh, invite whatever term you'd like to use or that resonates with you to join me and my family. I believe we have found a way of living uh, and learning and loving with passion and conviction, that you need passion and conviction in order to be uh, content, to be satisfied, to have purpose in your life. And so, in our case, it's a love for learning, a love for creation, a love for nature, a love for children, a love for family. That's all under this arching love of God that we operate under. But it's out of passion and conviction that we do these things. And I tell you what, it's a darn fun place to be. And I invite you to be there as well and to live your life with passion and conviction. And great things will happen. Thank you very much.